Good morning, my dear students. So today we are going to learn a new lesson for a pollution-free nature. Have you heard about photosynthesis? Yes, it's the term we have studied from lower classes. It's a process by which the plants prepare food in the leaves using carbon dioxide and water, isn't it? Yes. And during photosynthesis, they release oxygen. This oxygen is dependent by the plants and animals. We breathe in oxygen. And plants also take in oxygen during the night time. So see children how the living things like plants and animals depend upon the non-living things. Oxygen comes from air. So it is a non-living thing. So non-living things like air, soil, water. How the living things are dependent upon. So you can see a table in your textbook in which they have given the creature's name and how they are dependent on air, soil, water. If you are looking in fish and aquatic plants, they breathe oxygen or air present in the water. And the water bodies exist in soil. If you take the look of the soil, water bodies exist in soil. And in water, they live in water, they require water for their existence. But when you look birds, birds breathe the oxygen from the atmosphere. Not only birds, insects and human beings also breathe the oxygen from the atmosphere. Now what about the soil? How they are dependent on soil? Birds depend on the plants and the trees that grow in the soil. They eat the fruits which is grown in the plants. So like that they are dependent on the soil. In insects, we can see most of the insects are grown in the soil and it is needed for their existence. Human beings require soil for their shelter. For their various activities, for various purposes, they require the soil. Now coming to water, birds drink water. Water is very essential. Even insects also drink water. Human beings also drink water and they use the water for many domestic purposes. So this is what you can understand from this table. How they are dependent on the non-living things like air, soil, water. Now we can concentrate on soil. You know soil are of different types. They are not same anywhere. They will be different in their size and shapes. If you take the soil from the paddy field, it will be pale in color. And it, the rock particles will be very small. And But it is rich in clay as well as in humus. What is humus? It's a dead remains or organic remains of plants and animals. So, when you talk about the soil which is taken from garden, it will be brown in color, but it has less clay. The grains or the rock particles will be little bigger compared to the soil which is taken from paddy field. But the soil from the garden has got a organic matter, has got rich organic matter. That's why the plants are able to grow in the garden. Now if you take the soil which is used for construction purposes, it may be either red or white. The white soil consists of only low organic remains. So this is about 
the soil now we can look the different properties of soil first one is about the water absorption capacity of the soil if you take a soil there are three layers for a soil you take some soil to take the garden soil and pour some water into it and keep it for some time till the top layer of the top of the water becomes clear because if you keep it for some time all the components which is present in the soil soil consists of air water minerals many rock particles everything so when you keep it for some time all the components of the soil will come down the rock particles will settle at the bottom above that is the mud particles and above that is the organic remains organic remains so organic remains mud and the rock particles so these are the layers of soil you can see when you keep the uh, soil for some time so talking about the water absorption the moisture content in the soil for that there is an experiment given in your textbook fill the boiling tube with soil and cover the mouth of the tube with the cotton heat it under a spirit lamp afterwards you can see that there are traces of water in the inner side of the test tube water content can be seen in the inner side so the moisture content of the soil differ in different types of soil it will not be the same for that there is another experiment from your textbook take the soil from the paddy field take soil from yard and take sand put it in three beakers separately take a filter paper and make it in the form of cone as shown in the picture and you place it inside the funnel then you take soil soil from the paddy field sand and soil from the yard then using a dropper add drops of water and you have to add drops of water and count it how many drops of water you are adding and you have to continue this process till the water comes out from the funnel to the beaker so we can see that from this experiment the maximum water absorbing capacity is for the soil which is collected from paddy field and the sand it has minimum amount because uh, from the experiment we can see that the water drains out of the funnel into the beaker in the case of sand so the absorption rate is very less in the case of sand so water absorption content is high in the soil which is having more organic content so the soil from the paddy field has more organic content that is organic remains of plants and animals that's why plants are able to grow in the paddy field next property we can look on to the organic content of the soil we have studied in lower classes that when the leaves fall down or the dead remains of the bodies of animals it will 
get decomposed by certain group of organisms, microorganisms called decomposers like bacteria and fungi. They break down this organic remains and extract nutrients from them and add them to the soil in which the plants absorb this for their growth. So you have learned this in the lower classes. So the top soil in different layers of soil first one is the top soil which is very rich in organic content. It will be dark in color. Second layer as we told in the case it is mud. It is subsoil. And the last layer is the bedrock which contains only the rock particles. So there is another experiment in which take three test tubes. Take soil which is from the uh, paddy field then take the soil red soil sand and the top soil i told you the soil from the paddy field that is the top soil that is where uh, it should be collected from the area where the trees are grown from there you have to take the soil Using a dropper, add hydrogen peroxide. You know hydrogen peroxide, it decomposes the organic matter very fast. And due to the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide, it releases oxygen in gaseous form. Like a foam, it will create gaseous, that is oxygen. So when you add the drops, 2-3 drops of hydrogen peroxide into each test tube, the soil which gives more gaseous form consists of more organic matter. So this is how to test the organic content of the soil. So what leads to the variation of water content? Availability of soil the difference in the rate of evaporation, capability to retain water and the difference in organic matter. So these are the reasons for the variation of water content of the soil. So top soil is a soil which is very rich in organic matter so that almost all the plants grow in this layer but due to some reasons nowadays the top soil is not at all see it's getting lost see it will take many years for the formation of top soil top soil is very essential for the plants to grow so what are the reasons of this top soil, the disappearance of the top soil? It may be due to the heavy wind, heavy rain and due to deforestation. During deforestation, you know what is deforestation? The cutting of the trees is called deforestation. Plants, the roots of the plants will hold the soil tightly. Will hold the top soil very tightly so that the top soil cannot move anywhere. But if you cut down the trees, there are no roots available. So as a result, the, the top soil is getting lost. It's carried away by the wind and water, by the flowing water. So this all are the reasons for the disappearance of the top soil. So this is about today's topic. Hope you have understood today's topic. Bye children.